here's a tour of an ASM that is on the test stand. So this is the unit at startup, initial power to the unit, going through some configuration screens. And it'll eventually get to the summary screen that shows one of two compressors. Shows the spreadsheet. And then after that, after this loading bar, it shows it with a low pressure and high pressure kind of tachometer looking display. And it's coming here shortly. There it is. So um, on this screen, we show the unit state, and we see here that it's the run stop switch is in the off position. So now we're going to turn that to the run position to the right. And now we see the unit is loading. There we see that the unit is loading. And the next indication we'll see that the unit is holding. That'll happen shortly after this. I'm not sure what holding means. Um, I'm not sure the definition of that. So this is sort of the standard startup. Um, and there's the shot of unit is holding. So the next thing we're going to do is show how to switch between uh, compressor one and compressor two. And so there you see the, the pencil hitting the, the toggle button. And now the screen is switching. And now we've got status of compressor two. And you see that it switches up above compressor one, compressor two in the upper right hand corner. And now we're going to switch to the detailed status screen. So we go up to the menu bar. We'll zoom in there. It's called the button bar. And we're going to click on status. So when we go to button bar status, we'll see the screen change here. And now it's loading and we'll see the status screen. So the status screen is a series of little spreadsheets and you can drag and expand their view and it'll give you information. So this is the system status um, table. It gives you a, a bunch of information about the unit. And now we'll talk about reviewing and clearing faults on the unit. So we're back in a startup mode. And these are the, the standard screens that the unit goes through at startup. And part of what we'll do here is we'll try to clear lockouts, but we'll do it without having entered a, um, a factory code to give us permission to reach that level. And we'll see that it doesn't allow us to um, actually clear the lockouts. So in this scenario, we've removed a wire from the uh, high pressure switch input. So we've gotten to the summary screen here for both compressors. We see that the unit is in lockout. And we'll also be able to get a view from the arrow there um, pointing to an L. We'll get a close up of it here, an L in the red circle next to compressor two. So we know that there's some issue directly related to compressor two. We also see from the M10 high pressure switch uh, that the unit is, is tripped there. And then we, we find the wire that's loose and we put that in. I'm not 100% sure why we had the switch number one showing compressor number two with the L and trip. I don't know if there was an issue there, whether that's just a function of the video. So we're going to see that the high pressure switch is still in trip, even though we've corrected the issue with the wiring there at M10. We're going to go up to reset lockouts here. And when we hit reset lockouts, it's, it's not going to do anything. It's going to leave the unit still in, in lockout. It's not going to resolve the trip. And we do have the, um, at this stage, we do have the phase monitor trip as well. 
um, because when we start the unit, we're going to have that phase monitor trip every time we start and power the unit. So the unit's in lockout, and then we realize that we need to enter sort of a maintenance code. And so you'll watch us do that now. We go to the button bar at the menu at the top. And then we see the opportunity to enter the maintenance code. I'm not sure where that those maintenance codes are located in our O&M or if they are. I'm not sure what the plan is there to have that available to the owner. So we see that we're still in phase monitor trip. Um, see the phase monitors. I think it was supposed to show that it's green there. Now, though, we hit the reset lockouts. And because we've entered that factory code, now phase loss is okay. So the, the main lesson there, it seemed that you could hit reset lockouts and um, it wouldn't necessarily tell you that you don't have a maintenance code, it just wouldn't reset the lockouts. But I, I may not understand all this perfectly well. So now with having reset the lockouts and corrected the high pressure switch, um, the unit was loading and now the unit is holding. Again, I'm not 100% sure I understand what holding means. Um, like to see sort of a definition of, of the different things that are on this, on this screen, uh, ideally with some, you know, screenshots, uh, as part of that, similar to what's in the operator's guide for the older controller, but just use the newer controller and sort of give a, a tour. That'd be pretty handy. So from this main summary screen, now we're going to go back up to the button bar and down to status. And status will take us to the several spreadsheet view of some of the details of what's going on with the chiller. And we see that here. So we've got system status, and we'll, we'll take a, a tour of a few of these. We see the compressor one is off, compressor two is running, and we've got different information about the electronic expansion valve below that. So we're going to expand, or actually close all these windows to minimize them. And we're minimizing all of the windows, and we see the different, so alarm, set points, schedule, service, system status, analog outputs, and relay. So here's system status that we've looked at before. And now we'll uh, minimize that. All right, here we go. So minimizing system status. And now we're going to open up alarms. And one of the things with alarms is we can tell when an alarm happened, but there wasn't a way to tell which ones had been cleared and if we if there are any that are active so it didn't seem to be any color coding or you know they weren't listed in red or anything if they were still active so now we're going to look at the sensor inputs and we'd been on this screen before so the motor fault m9 is in off because we don't have a motor fault uh, on this particular chiller so that that uh, input doesn't exist so we have it in off so that we're not triggering an unnecessary alarm So now we're closing in on relay outputs from the controller. We have the list 
the name, the list, uh, whether they're on or off and that they're in auto or if any were in manual, that would show up. And we go back to the reset lockouts uh, window to show that. We were just showing that it lockout shows up, reset lockout shows up in the alarm list, so you can tell when it was last reset.